Bonjour à tous et bienvenue pour cette rencontre Inside the Dog du 21e FIFO. Euh, Aujourd'hui, nous allons nous intéresser au film Circle of Silence, réalisé par Luigi Acquisto et Lourdes Pires, euh, présenté en compétition du festival du 2 au 11 février 2024. Cet entretien sera réalisé en anglais. Yorana, Steven, and um, congratulations on this, on this film. Um, welcome and thanks for being with thanks. us um, on this occasion. It's a pleasure to, to welcome you for this. Um, Thank you very much. It's, it's lovely to be able to speak with you. Thank you. Um, I was just saying before we, before we speak that um, your film will be presented in the competition category of our festival. Um, And um, what did you expect um, when submitting the film to FIFO? Well, we've had a film accepted in the past and it was very well received. And so we felt that it would be a, a good place for Circle of Silence, which deals with not the same subject matter, but it's a, a Timorese, East Timorese story, this time with an Australian uh, strong Australian aspect to it. So we were hoping that it would be accepted and of course we'll, you know, we're very delighted that it's um, in competition. Mm. Yes. I mean, it's a film that speaks about our region and for that reason I think we, we felt that it would be great if, you know, it was shown at FIFA. Okay. Um, so the, the film tells the story of Shirley Shackle Shackleton Um, whose husband was one of the Balibu Five, and um, one of the five journalists killed um, in Timor in 1975 by the, by the Indonesian army. Um, and for almost 50 years, she dedicated herself um, to lead her own investigation about, um, about, about the, the, the story as the, the Australian federal police abandoned, abandoned The, the, their investigation and um, with her book first and then um, in this film she brings new evidence on the table um, can, can you tell us the, the story behind the story how did you get the idea of the film at first well as a team I've worked with uh, Stella Zamataro producer Betty uh, who is also a producer or director at times, and she's in Timor-Leste. And Lourdes Pirish, who's in this instance my co-director, we've always worked for many years on films about East Timor. And generally they've been films about the birth of a new nation and some of the issues confronting that. Uh, but for years we've had a desire to explore the story of the Balabo Five, five Australian-based journalists who were murdered in Timor, in Balabo, in 1975, by Indonesian forces. And Ludus is Timorese, she lives in Darwin, and she fled Timor uh, days before the Indonesian invasion. But before that, she'd met Greg Shackleton and the other two Australians who worked for Channel 7. Mm -hmm. And then a year later, 1976, she met Shirley Shackleton in Darwin. So the, for Lourdes, there's been this very strong connection, uh, and for us as well. I mean, we worked on the feature film Balibo, and so all of that came together, and we thought, well, it's time to tell that story, particularly given that it had been covered up for so long by the Australian government, and is still being covered up by the Australian government, the true facts of that case. Um, and surely was determined that she, in the wake of the Australian Federal Police investigation being abandoned, try and establish a uh, cause for that investigation to be reopened and to try and find some truths about what actually happened to her husband and the other four journalists. Mm. Okay. Um So the, 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 the film is also adapted from her book. 
um, how was the collaboration with her during the the the, the filming process? Oh, look, it was a very close collaboration. It was a very loose adaptation of her book. It was, in a sense, taking up where the book left off. There were some historical biographical elements, mm -hmm. but it was also moving forward. And, I mean, we became great friends with Shirley, and um, she was part of the process at every stage. So okay. uh, she led the investigation. So, you know, we went to Timor, we went to Indonesia, we also went to uh, Perth in Australia, Canberra and so on. And then she had a very um, big part in actually scripting. Of course, she, she wrote the voiceover, the narration for the film, would then edit that, would view the cuts, comment on the edit. So she was a real collaborator in many ways on the film. Mm -hmm. And um, how did the script evolve uh, along the process? Well, the actual shooting script evolved through discussions with Shirley and the decision that, you know, we would travel to Dili initially and from Dili to Balibo. And then once we're in Balibo and we discovered certain facts about the case, that naturally led us to Indonesia, to Jakarta, to try and meet the alleged killer. Mm. Um, so it unfolded quite organically. The script for the narration was more considered in the sense that we decided that as well as it being a story about Shirley, Shirley's life, her investigation, that journey would trigger and segue into moments in Timor's history that were relevant. And so the narration was written with Shirley and I uh, to sort of work out how we were able to integrate Some of those historical moments, the involvement, okay. for example, of the United States, of Australia, yeah, the influence of the impact of the Vietnam War and the decision to invade Timor at a time when communism was a real fear in that region. So, yeah, again, it was a, both were very close collaborations with Shirley and with Lourdes, my co-director. Yes. Okay. Um... And what um, during filming, what did you fear the most? Uh, I mean, we were, there was an element of fear in Jakarta because mm -hmm. we were there filming, uh, uh, trying to meet uh, Yunus Yosfia, who's the alleged killer. Yes. And he's a very powerful man. And um, uh, since leaving the military, uh, he became a politician, he's very close to Prabol, mm -hmm. who um, has run for the presidency twice. We were actually being driven around by Yunus's driver because Lourdes went to school in Timor with Yunus's wife. She's East Timorese. And so we met with her, we're able to talk to her, but uh, in an attempt to get to meet with Yunus and discuss the, the case with him. But um, so that was probably the the most, uh, the scariest part of, of the film. But the, the other sort of element was just trying to uncover uh, what the truth was. And there was a lot of barriers, a lot of difficulties um, in that, from being able to talk to people who <laughs> were there at the time, and many of them, of course, have passed, um, and just trying to, you know, really establish what had happened. Okay, wow. And um, um, did you have, uh, were there any problem that was opposed by governments of, of um, any origins during the, the filming process or maybe after the, the, the film was completed? No, no, we've worked fairly independently. Okay. You know, the film was funded through partly through East Timor, a uh, uh, large part through um, crowdfunding and other sources. Uh, so we weren't really linked to a broadcaster for this one. Um, so that gave us a, a freedom uh, to be able to really explore quite boldly some of these allegations that had been made, not only against 
Indonesian military, but, mm -hmm. you know, very strongly against the Australian government, its complicity in the invasion of Timor-Leste, okay. its collaboration with Indonesia, yes. and its um, uh, persistent cover-up uh, for over 50 years now. Mm. Okay. So, no, that we haven't had that sort of resistance or issues um, uh, that's been articulated in any way. I mean, the film uh, hopefully will be shown in Indonesia soon. Um, and, you know, I'm sure as our previous films that have been shown there, there's, there's a lot of support for the truth yes. um, by many Indonesians, but there's also uh, criticism that the films are, are basically not factual, that mm -hmm. they're inventing stories about the um, Indonesian military actions in Timor-Leste. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, have you already screened the, the film in Timor? Yes, we have. Yeah, we, um, we returned earlier this year and had a premiere screening in Timor in English. Mm -hmm. um, and we're now, we've now dubbed the film into Tetum, the, one of the uh, official languages of Timor. Okay. And it... that, pardon? No, yes. no. Yeah. Go ahead, please. Yeah, we've now dubbed the film into Tetum, one of the official languages of Timor, uh, which was a huge job. And um, so we've had another trip to Timor where we showed the film, but also recorded all the voices, all the actors for the different um, roles. And that will be shown more widely. It'll, it'll be shown uh, on the national network, as well as uh, we're planning to have uh, a touring, yeah, screening the film in communities, open air screenings, um, and then having Q and A's with Lourdes and other of the Timorese filmmakers that we've collaborated with. Yes, okay. And um, is there a, a TV broadcast planned? Maybe with Channel 7 even? No, we've, um, we've uh, shown it theatrically in Australia. So it's yes. been in the cinemas all around the country. Okay. It's been pick, picked up by the ABC. Um, ABC International, mm -hmm. and we're still discussing a uh, uh, free-to-air network here, but we'll be exploring that as well as um, streaming services. Okay. Uh, very short. It's quite a controversial film, so you can never really tell. Yes, you never what can tell. The reasons are for why you know it's often met with a, a silent response. Mm. But um, yeah, no, it's had a, had good exposure here, and. Um, Yeah, it's had good exposure here, mm -hmm. and you know we're hoping to get it on, on as I said, free to air or a streaming service in Australia as well. Yes, and now you have the 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 FIFA audience as well. Yes, now that's wonderful. And um, yeah, we're very very happy with that, and very very proud to be part of the festival. Uh, yeah, and looking forward to to the screening very much. Yeah, we do too. And um, well, um, until then, what kind of feedback did you get from the audience who see who saw the the, the film? Because I, I mean, as you said, it's a it's quite controversial uh, controversial as a film. So, is the feedback um, also um, mitigate? Well, the, the feedback we've had is always there's been positive. There's been. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a film that it, it does re reveal a number of new facts about what happened and it moves the investigation forward. Uh, but it also tells the story of what happened from 75 to today mm -hmm. uh, in relation to the cover-up by the Australian government, New Zealand, Britain, Indonesia, of course, not only to the murders of the five journalists, but to, but to another Australian journalist who was murdered on the day, the day after the invasion, Roger East, mm -hmm. and to the genocide that unfolded in Timor. And the Australian government was very closely complicit in that for decades. And not only complicit in that it turned a blind eye, as uh, Professor Clinton Fernandez says in the film, Australian officials looked directly at what was happening mm -hmm. and helped. Mm -hmm. So that was a shock to 
many Australians who have seen the film, particularly Australians of the left who uh, adored the Prime Minister of the time, Gough Whitlam. Yes. Um, and, you know, didn't realise his uh, involvement in the, uh, with Indonesia, his complicity in the invasion, possibly in the cover-up of the, the murders, and then subsequent Prime Ministers from Malcolm Fraser onwards. So it's been quite eye-opening for many people. Mm -hmm. um, and in Timor, it's had a very good response and it's a valuable tool because there's very little uh, literature, historical literature, any literature, literature of any sort. So the film's really quite an important document that uh, tells the history of Timor in a very broad way from 1975 onwards. Mm -hmm. But it's also a very engaging film. I mean, what people respond to the most is Shirley Shackleton. She's, she passed away earlier this year in January yes. after the film was finished, had attended a screening. She was 91. But she, even in her 80s when we filmed over a number of years, she's phenomenal talent, lots of energy, passion. And I think that's what carries the film and that's what people really responded to uh, very strongly. Okay. Yes, I was about to ask um, what um, if uh, Shari could have seen the film before before she passed. Um, and the yeah, she saw. It. Yeah, yes. she saw it many times, of course, because she was in the edit suite with me constantly um, when we're doing the narration. Mm -hmm. So we would record the narration, lay it in. She would review it. She would watch the film give us feedback because she was very, very meticulous on getting the truth, getting mm -hmm. the facts right because there's been so much false information that's come out of the Australian government, the Indonesian government about what happened in Balabo, how the men were killed, why they were there and so on. So she'd seen the film many times but we did have a, a small screening of about 50 people with Shirley there um, couple of months before she passed so she and she was quite you know quite alert quite um engaged uh and you know that was a great opportunity to share the film with her that time mm -hmm. yes um talking about impact what kind of achievement are you looking for the film now well there's several things we want to achieve. One is to get it shown in East Timor widely mm -hmm. in Tetum. So there's still a high level of illiteracy, so subtitling yes. wasn't going to work. Okay. Um, and so we've moved towards that. We've dubbed the film into Tetum and we uh, have discussed, we've had discussions with uh, RTTL, the, the broadcaster there, and uh, we're planning to travel with the film. Or Ludus and Betty will travel with the film. So that, that's an important part of the impact campaign, to really use that as, a, as an educational tool mm -hmm. um, and to show communities that um, what actually happened and why it happened uh, in 1975 and onwards. In Australia, we're hoping to raise awareness of the issue, but um, to get together a number of different people who are activists, not necessarily involved in the film, some of them appeared in the film, to look at ways in which the, the investigation can move forward. Uh, the AFP investigation could be reopened. Mm -hmm. um, Shirley and others argue that it was abandoned on grounds that weren't valid. And also really to have the remains of the grave, the journalists were bizarrely buried in Jakarta, not yet the remains weren't brought back to Australia, had that grave opened, the remains repatriated, tested to see what's in there and to see if they can give uh, any uh, information about what actually happened. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, we're almost done with this interview. Um, well, what should we add to, well, what, what would you like to add to, to encourage our viewers to, to watch the film? 
I think it's a, a very important film for Australia, for Timor Leste, but also for the region, because it really sheds light on the the politics uh, of Australia over many many years and how they've affected policy in the region and behaviour in terms of you know being good citizens within the region or not being good citizens and I think that's important for people to know and also it's just it's a very uh, serious film it's a cold case murder investigation yes but it's also a very engaging film you know as I said earlier Shirley's uh, uh, wonderful she's erudite she's passionate and she's a joy to watch and I think that really brings the film to life. Okay. Well, that's, um, that's great. Thank you very much, Luigi. Thank you for uh, right. joining us. Thank you very us. much. And, uh, it's a real pleasure and honor. Yes. <laughs> and um, yeah. good luck for the competition. Right. Thank and, you. And uh, also, uh, as a reminder, Circle of Silence will be presented in the competition category of the festival. Um, from the 2nd until the, tw the 11th of February. Uh, hopefully we'll meet at the, at the festival. Um, yes. And uh, well, and, and, until then, um, take care. Have a nice holiday season. <laughs> yes, and thank you very much. And all the best with the preparations for the festival. I know it must be a, a lot of work. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. Okay. Thank you.